Hi, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about RC circuit with AC power supply, so alternating current power supply. You can see the contents here, so I'm going to go through AC and DC signals, capacitors and AC circuit, capacitive reactants, impedance, gain and cutoff frequency, and then we'll finally move on to the summary. So key learning points, after this lecture, you should be able to understand the effect of an AC power supply on the resistor and capacitor. The capacitive reactance and how to determine this, and the effect impedance has on the output current voltage when increased frequency results in increased voltage drop and phase lead. We're only gonna briefly touch on some of those points um, within this lecture though. So if we're considering alternating current and direct current signals, you can see here. So we can see direct is what we've looked at so far. So DC. Um, we looked at the use of a low pass filter to effectively filter out high frequency data to give a much cleaner signal and let do something that's possibly more useful in terms of control or, or whatever the application is you're using it for. What we're now going to consider is, as I said, alternating current. So you can see this here, this effectively this sine wave here. This is known as an alternating current, this sine wave here. And this is kind of typically AC um, is how your um, how your power is, is supplied in your home. So you do have a transformer that then would convert it into a direct current. What you can have is noise on on this. So tend to apply a filter so you can see pulsating. If you were to apply a filter to this, you might get a signal that's uh, like effectively reduces the spikes. Okay, so you, hence the use of a low pass filter again to achieve the same effect as what we saw on the direct current. Um, okay, so alternating current, direct current, you can obviously transform the alternating current to the direct current, the supply that, the supply that you get in your home, but yeah, you might but you're possibly going to get noise or pulse, all these this pulsating on it, so and hence the need to apply a filter. So what I'm now going to talk about is capacitors in an AC circuit. So if you recall from a DC circuit, the capacitor charging up slowly until effectively at this point it's fully charged, and the fully charged um, point of that effectively being equal to the supply voltage. So a capacitor across an AC circuit charges and discharges continuously because what you don't have what you have now is obviously like a sine wave rather than a a, a continue like a continuous um, voltage supply due to continuous changes in alternating voltage levels. So what I've got here now is just a resistor capacitor in the circuit and you can see here now my supply now is rather than it being DC it's now AC so it's just this is a symbol we use for just varying um, well an alternating voltage level and this is pretty much what it looks like so you saw it on the previous slide but you can see here direct current and you can see an alternating current um, supply there so the voltage over time so the voltage and current in AC circuit can be represented by the following so um, these here, so V um, V of T is equal to V subscript M, where V subscript M denotes the amplitude or pink va peak value of the sinusoidal variation for voltage. Okay, sine, and then then you've got this omega here, where effectively omega represents here two pi f, where f is the effectively the um, the frequency, so F here denotes this uh, effect of the frequency, i.e. the number of complete oscillations per second. So this omega here is effectively the angular frequency with units of radians a second. Okay, and then finally T here. So you can see on the graph here, so look at this graph here, we can see V of T, so you can see the voltage here. So it's this kind of this slightly blue line here. Okay, then we can got I of T, so for the current, which is equal to I of M, which effectively I of M is just, well, the slight difference is it denotes the, the amplitude um, effectively for the sinusoidal current. 
Uh, you've got the sine term here. Again, you've got the omega, you've got the t. And what you have here is this um, <clears throat> symbol here, which denotes the phase difference between the voltage and the current. So that's quite important because you get a phase difference, and hence this is effectively an angle difference between the voltage and the current. So you can see current here, and you can see voltage here. And you're already seeing, you're kind of seeing, well, this is my voltage here, this is my current here. And what you'll notice is, in this particular graph, or you can see here on the, on the angle here, I've added 90 here. Okay, for a pure capacitor, and what I mean by that is where if we were looking at this circuit here, all we have is a capacitor and we have no resistance. So for a pure capacitor, the current will lead the voltage by 90 degrees, and hence the angle there will be 90. So that changes, though, depending on the value of the resistor. But it's equal to 90 degrees lead, and hence a positive number there, when we have just a capacitor. Bigger capacitor will give you, obviously, a bigger value, given that you have resistors, but obviously 90 in this case is the biggest value that we can get. So if we're looking at this graph, so you're thinking, well, where does that 90 degrees lead come from? So we're looking here, so let's first of all look at current. So if we're looking at current, so you can see the maximum value of current here. So as soon as we switch on, so we supply um, some power to this RC, to this, um, well, at the moment, let's just, let's just cross off the resistor with the capacitor. What's happening is we are, current, current effectively flows to the max. So you can see there, current's flowing to the max. And when you can see here, now, now that's current at the max. Now you can see the voltage here building up, and you can see here the voltage here is at its peak here. So the voltage is at its peak, um, and whereby at this point the capacitor is fully charged. And what you'll notice is at this point the current here is zero, i.e. the capacitor is fully charged, so there's no current flow. And you can see that relationship occurs as, as you look at the two sine waves. So current maximum current flow it's obviously the capacitor is not going to be fully charged when the voltage is fully charged within the capacitor you have zero current flow okay so what we're going to talk about now is a couple of equations um, just to describe the ac circuit so the current is directly proportional to the rate of change of the supplied input voltage so you can see here the current is equal to effective rate of change of charge. So changing of charge with time, where charge is, if you recall, is equal to capacitance multiplied by the voltage. Therefore, the following is given. So current is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the rate of change of the voltage. In, an, in a DC circuit, the current flow is blocked by a capacitor. So once the capacitor is fully charged, the current effectively is blocked. So if you're looking at this diagram, although it's not necessarily that scientific, but I think it's useful to get your head around. So think of the DC, um, well, the current here being blocked by effectively one of the plates. In an AC circuit, the capacitor and circuit resistance presents a frequency dependent impedance to a current flow. So it's frequency dependent in terms of the impedance. We're gonna talk more about impedance, but it very much depends on the, on the frequency. So you can see here the AC here, the alternating current, effectively, you can kind of think of it jumping between the two plates. It's not scientific, but it kind of gets your head through. So an AC um, current will effectively pass between the two plates. So if we're looking at this table here, you can see AC, DC, so frequency, yeah, greater than zero. Obviously, DC, there's no there's no frequency. It's just a continuous value. And the current passing through the capacitor, um, yeah, they can pass through it greater than zero. And zero, no, you can't pass any current through the, through the um, two plates. In this slide, I'm going to talk about the capacitive reactants. So the reactance for the capacitor is effectively the charging opposition to the alternating current by the capacitance. So it's effectively like a resistance to the charging of that capacitor. 
and due to the AC's um, the frequency effector that's introduced via the alternating current. The units being in ohms. So the equation that we use for this is given by this. So where uh, X subscript C is the capacitive reactance is equal to one divided by two pi multiplied by the frequency of the alternating current multiplied by the capacitance. So if we look at this graph here, where effectively this graph has been plotted for a 10 microfarad capacitor, where effectively we're increasing the frequency along the x-axis, and you can see how the reactance changes along the, the y-axis. So it's clear to see as the frequencies increase, the magnitude of capacitive reactance decreases. You can see the general trend here. This same trend would also occur, obviously a slightly um, different um, graph where it'd be plotted, if we were to change the capacitance here. Okay, so you'd expect the same sort of trend, but obviously you're gonna end up with slightly different data. So if we look at an example here, so what is the capacitive reactance of the arrangement given below, where we've got a resistor with a thousand ohms, we've got a capacitor with a thousand um, microfarad, so 10 to the power of minus six, and we've got 12 volts being supplied with a frequency of um, 10 hertz. So if you use an equation 5,5, so you can see here the reactance of impedance is one over two pi, multiplied by 50, because the frequency of the AC um, supply is 50 hertz, multiplied by the capacitance, which in this case is 1,000, effectively times 10 to the power of minus six, which is gonna give us 10 to the power of minus three. Work that out and we get the reactance, well, the capacitive reactance to give us a value of 3.18 ohms. Now introducing to impedance. So this represents the opposition of the current to the flow of the alternating current. And this very much depends on the frequency of the supplied input voltage. So if we consider, first of all, a resistor, so when a sinusoidal current is passing through a resistor, the resulting voltage is in phase with the current. So you remember back to when we, back at the start of the lecture, we had the two sine waves when you pass a current effectively through an alternating current through a resistor, the voltage and the current will be in phase of each other. So this is known as the impedance of the resistor being real. And as we saw, this is just as a recap, current passing through a pure capacitor, i.e. assuming that there's no resistance in the circuit, results in the current leading the voltage by 90 degrees. Okay, that's not normally the case, obviously, because you do have resistance in the circuit, but a pure kind of capacitor circuit, 90 degrees lead for the voltage, um, results in the current, sorry, leading the voltage by 90 degrees. So this is known as a reactive element, and this is represented by an imaginary impedance. So the impedance of resistors and capacitors is given by uh, the following. So this Z subscript R is just equal to R. In that case, it's a real term, real value. Z subscript C, so the impedance of the capacitor is equal to this J, where J is effectively an imaginary number. X of C, so we saw that previously, the, effectively we used the symbol on the previous side for the actants, is equal to J one over omega multiplied by C. Below is the complex representation of the impedance of the arrangement. So you can see here, we have R along here, and then XC here, which is the imaginary. So if you recall, if you studied argon diagrams, where you have an, a real part and an imaginary part, this is pretty much what this kind of is, is based on that. Then we have here this angle here, which is the phase lead of the current. Okay, so the phase lead of the current. Ohm's law for an AC circuit involving a resistor and capacitor is therefore given by the following. So the voltage is equal to the current multiplied by this Z term here, where Z is effectively here the um, resistor plus effectively this imaginary number multiplied by XC. 
and for single pass in isolation ohm's law becomes effectively this so the voltage is equal to the current multiplied by again x subscript c which is for the reactance capacitance that we saw on the previous slide what i'm now going to introduce you to is the something known as the gain and the cut off frequency so the bandwidth an rc circuit is the point at which the gain v out over v in drops by three decibels and this corresponds to the cutoff frequency okay so there's a lot of information there you don't necessarily need to understand it all but the point you need to understand is this if we're looking at this diagram here we've got frequency here of the effectively the ac alternating current we've got here v out over v in which we could represent as decibels but again v out over v in is fine um you can see here we've got a value of just given a value of one here so as we increase the frequency what starts to happen is you start to get this drop off here okay and you get the drop off here and what happens is basically the v out over v in so this uh, effectively this the gain here starts to decrease it starts to decrease at obviously a detriment to the performance of the rc circuit so we pretty much say this this f here cut off or um here which which is effective is the cut off frequency or the corner point whatever you want to call it is the point which really we don't want to design anywhere beyond that because we're getting such a drop in effectively the the the, the gain that it's going to obviously harm the performance of the rc circuit so this is in this particular case a value of one the that number here is 0 0.707 um, so the cutoff frequency denoted F subscript cutoff is the frequency which the gain drops in three decimals to 0 0.707 multiplied by the maximum voltage output frequency. The cutoff frequency of the filter is given via this equation. So it's 1 over 2 pi multiplied by your resistor and your capacitor value. Okay, so... As just to repeat, as you increase the frequency, what you get is a drop in the gain value, and that's going to harm your performance. So what you want to do is make sure when you're designing your designing your RC filter such that you don't go beyond this cutoff frequency point. So you don't obviously um, so you design your filter such that it can obviously the frequencies you're subjecting it to, it's not going to end up anywhere um, down beyond this this kind of the, this three decibels. In this example, what I want to do is design a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of around 10 kilohertz using standard components. What you need to do is show the calculation, circuit layout and the value of the components used. So if you use equation 511, so for the cutoff frequency here, this is equal to 10 to the power of 4 because we've got 10 kilohertz which is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC, so if you remember that equation. If you arrange the above to make RC the subject, so i.e. RC is equal to 1 over 2 pi, 10 to the power of 4, um, because obviously that's our cutoff frequency, so rearrange that equation to make RC the subject. A capacitor value of 10 nanofarad is selected, therefore rearranging the above, the following is given so we've selected a value of, uh, of this so obviously we've got um, capacitor value now so what i need to do basically is just resistor here is just effectively divide by c and that's obviously just going to move that to there give this equation substitute in c which is 100 nanofarad which is 110 times 10 to the power of minus 9 and the result i'm then going to get for the resistor is 139 159 sorry so 159 if we look at the e24 resistor sizes the closest resistor value i get is 160 ohms so that there is the resistor that i'm going to select therefore the standard components are 100 nano farad um, for my capacitor and 160 ohm for my capacitor 
with these giving the low pass filter cutoff frequency of 9.952 kilohertz. So it's approximately 10 kilohertz, that's fine. And you can see the components here on the circuit diagram. So 160 ohm resistor, 100 nanofarad capacitor, um, and that there will give us, like I say, it will give us the cutoff frequency of approximately 10 kilohertz. So in summary, the effect of the AC power supply has been detailed to the alternating current and the effect this has on the reactance of a capacitor. And has also been detailed how to determine this. The effect of the overall impedance has on the output voltage current has been detailed, although only very briefly. So i.e. increasing the frequency of the AC power supply results in a voltage drop and a phase lead. So we've detailed effectively the introduction of the capacitor results in the current having a lead by 90 degrees for a pure um, capacitor circuit with no resistance. I've also detailed how increasing the frequency on a with an AC circuit can result in you getting that gain drop and obviously having a detriment on your performance of your RC filter or, or RC, well, your RC circuit and if you're using it as a low pass filter so the need to have uh, well, the need to design to a point that obviously you don't drop to the to, to the um, below the um, cutoff point so thank you for listening if you have any questions please feel free to contact me thank you